All right, what is going on guys? Today, you are going to learn three ways to enhance uh, or create Zoom transitions, right? So you don't need any plugins for this, except actually for the third version I'm gonna show you here, the third method I'm gonna show you. Um, and then I'm gonna show you a way to use all three of these methods to create a short little edit, which you just watched. So without further ado, let's get started. So I have some selects here and we're just gonna go in order. So the first one we're gonna do, we're gonna create a little sequence here. So we have some sushi being taken up by some chopsticks. Let's actually chop that one a little more. I actually don't like this. So first things first, and I'll do another video where I take, I show myself taking selects. It's very important that you take good selects uh, when you're doing an edit. So this was actually the better one because the sushi didn't stick to the plate. There we go. All right, so the first method of creating a zoom transition, so there's no zooming on any of these shots, right? These are just static shots. Actually, these two follow the sushi pieces being dipped in a sauce. So to create a little sequence, all we're gonna, all we're gonna go and do is add a zoom. And what you'll notice is a lot of times the transitions in my videos are not really transitions. They're, they're just, certain things happening in the clips themselves that give it a smoothness, that make it seem as if there's transitions happening when in reality there's not. So if you're already a Final Cut Pro user, you know how to do this, hopefully, uh, and you can do this in any program. You're just automating the clip, keyframing it at the first frame, skipping ahead to the last frame where we've created another keyframe, and then you should be able to just move the window around to wherever you want the window to go assuming that you have this checked right here. And that's gonna let you move it around. Pretty basic animation we're gonna make. That's gonna make it go towards the subject, right? And we're just gonna go ahead and do that a few times in a row and make sure our clip ends right when our subject is off the screen. And even if you're not going to automate all of these things, I like to check them all. This includes anchor, position, rotation, and all of these. And it's totally okay if it's not perfect. You always have to play it back. Just watch to taste. The reason I'm moving it uh, up this way, or the clip actually, yeah, up that way is because our, our subject is going up that way, right? Same with this one. I've moved it off to the left, then off to the right. Boom, boom. This one, I think we can go straight in because our subject ends on the... When the clip ends, the subject is right in the middle. I'm just going to zoom that in. And, you know, 135, let's see what the other ones were. And this is totally just to taste. 154, you don't want to make it too jumpy. Um, sometimes just a ever so slight zoom is more than enough. This is pretty dramatic zoom here. But, yeah, I, I like it. See, now even I think even this next one, you know, assuming you're shooting 4K, you can zoom quite a bit and it and it doesn't deteriorate the clip. And one more. Same thing, our subject ends pretty much right in the center. And I've gone 164 this time. I'm gonna just reframe the subject a little bit. It's another good thing about doing it this way. You can, um, or this, this method of the zoom transition here, if you will, you can reframe your subjects nicely. Look at that. And that's a little sequence. There's no actual transitions being added. No plugins are required. You can just do this pretty much anytime. Um, it creates this flow, creates a good movement going on, right? So on to the next one. Next, we have a clip of these scallops. Um, and these are already slowed to 20% speed. It looks like I reversed this one. So we'll reverse it back just to see what it was. Um, these are both slowed to 20% speed because they were shot in 120 frames per second, of course. I think this shot was before we had our backlighting, so the lighting is a little bit different. You can see I had a, um, a backlight on this one, kind of a warmer light going on. And this was actually shot with a probe lens, so that's how you can get so freaking close to this leaf here. Pretty cool. So all we're going to do is to make these zoom, let's reverse the clip so it's zooming in. First things first, you always want, if you're if you're gonna be making a zoom in or zoom out, you want your clips to be going in that direction uh, for starters. And you also, you know, as you saw in the last one, these, these were sort of all match cuts, right? So you want the transitions to be happening 
you don't want to transition a clip into the next thing for no reason. There's got to be some kind of a story already there. Um, and so, you know, these make sense to be next to each other. You know what I mean? And, and these, this is going to make sense to transition into this because it's the same subject, but in a different, um, you know, this is, it's shot with a different lens. So you're seeing it in a different way. So, uh, let's also reverse this one. So it's zooming in and this shot's a bit shaky. So we will stabilize it, but first we're gonna um, we're gonna do what's the method here. And the method here, all this method is, is the speed ramp transition. Very simple to do, especially if you're using Final Cut. So this shot starts out of focus because I had manual focus on this shot. So all we're gonna do, is start it here, and we're going to let's actually cut it a bit more so it's not so out of focus. So I'm going to let it play for just a, just a tiny little second. Maybe, maybe even a little less. Okay. Tiny little second. So you see it start to come into focus like right here. And then we're going to click shift B and create a speed ramp. Um, these gray bars decide how the timing is going to transition. And then, you know, you can either drag this, of course, to shorten your clip, or you can drag this orange in. Uh, and now you're creating a difference in speed. So you can see this is at 40% since we shot it in um, 60. Didn't we shoot this in 60? Let's find out. Yes. So yeah, that was my bad from before. We shot this clip in 60 and then this other clip in 120. So proper frame rate. And it's going to go a bit quicker. Let's even make it go even quicker. So it sort of jumps in like that. And since we've sped it up now, it's emphasizing those bumps a lot more. So let's go ahead and add some warp stabilization. And that's going to fix it up really nicely. Yep, nice and smooth. Okay, so we will do the same thing on the next clip, but we'll do the reverse, right? So now since we've gone fast or slow, to fast, now we will go fast to slow because you want it the, the fast parts to match up here so it looks like it's one cohesive fast movement. And you know, it's okay that this leaf I think is probably this leaf, but that's okay, it's gonna still make sense. So all you do is you go to the point where you want your slow to start, right? Click Shift B. Simply drag this in. Make sure your gray bars aren't too too long. So yeah, not really the best example. There's more that I would do. And um, this is where I would combine transitions. Um, but that still isn't bad. The next method, we're going to, again, this is going to happen where it makes sense to make a transition. Same, here, same thing we have here. We have this sushi with some caviar on it fish eggs, caviar, I'm not really sure the difference. Um, and then we're going to zoom it into this other one. And this one's going to require a plugin. And you can use any plugin you want that's a zoom in plugin. But again, the important thing is here is the clips have to make sense for a transition to work. You don't want to just throw this into to any old thing. You can use these drag and drop transitions anywhere, but it's in my mind, it sort of has to make sense. The one we're going to use is my favorite. It's a Twitch transition pack. I believe this is from Ryan Nangle. All the stuff will be linked below. Um, and this is just going to be, or actually we're gonna use number 12. This is just gonna be a Twitch zoom in. Simple as that. And then of course you can lengthen this to your liking. And I like these transitions a lot uh, because he lets you manipulate some of the um, parameters here. So we can turn down the blur, we can mess with the shake amount. I usually like to leave this, maybe just turn down that um, red, blue, green effect. Yeah. And even though this is a food video, you know, this isn't too crazy of a transition. This is still somewhat tasteful. 
Alrighty, that is all for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you guys how I made the sequence you saw in the beginning of this video using all three of these transition methods. So that video will appear on the screen now, and I will see you guys in that one.